Hey guys, uh, I'm Seth with uh, CP Addict. I'm the uh, IT guy here, uh, media guy, and just all around, just fill in where I can. Um, a little bit about myself. The I got into these uh, these these style of trucks um, probably close to ten years ago. Uh, picked up a uh, picked up a '93 uh, F350 Crew Cab Dually that with five speed and it was seven three idi non-turbo junk <laughs> it uh it was so slow it was so slow but it was my first uh first ford truck i'd ever bought uh grew up diehard chevy yeah so you know that that was my first truck that 93 five speed seven three um two wheel drive i i got it right as uh, me and my wife were getting our first house of our own uh in indiana we were living there at the time um actually picked the truck up uh, a few days before my second daughter was born um and kind of fell in love with the truck itself it, it was rusty it was rough it was you know all those things that a midwestern truck with i think it had three hundred thousand miles on it um but it always worked and it uh i ended up pulling a lot of trailers with it and the typical, you know, first time homeowner, you know, chores and this and that and whatever. Um, and, and I grew to like the body style. Um, probably, probably my favorite Ford body style there is e even including the new ones. Um, and so that's where that started. Um, that grew into a 95 crew cab dually five speed. Um, it, was a Cummins swap, so it had a P-Pump 12 valve in it, um, made good power. It, it had bigger injectors, bigger turbo, pump work, uh, you know, the, the typical 12 valve things. Um, it was probably in the 400 horsepower range. I actually picked it up in, te uh, in Texas. I, me and a buddy drove uh, straight through from Indiana down to Texas and back uh, in two days with with the slave cylinder on the on the transmission destroying itself on i-35 so uh that it was quite the trip that's that's a whole video just by itself um but retired the that that black 93 um, i had them both at the same time for a short bit and just never ever ever drove the 93 again after having that cummins truck um and then we, uh, we, we ended up moving back uh, to my hometown uh, on the farm, uh, Mexico, Missouri. Um, so obviously the, the 95 went with me and uh, it turned into a farm truck. It was two wheel drive and I lowered it and eventually um, put it on full air ride. 19.5 semi style wheels. Um, when, uh, with the air ride, it, it didn't lay frame, but it was, it was low. It was 16 inches lower than factory, um, when it was laid out and, uh, rode great. And it caused all sorts of grief on the internet because nobody believed that I used it on the farm. And, um, so it kind of became like my weekly goal to post a picture of it doing literal farm work, being a, a bagged dually two wheel drive, you know, just it, it made a lot of people upset, which was probably the only reason I posted the pictures of it. So I like to stir the pot. So, um, so I've, I've had that, uh, it went through a few different changes, um, you know, sound systems and, and the lowering and the airbags and, um, polishing it up. And it had different exhausts on it at different times and different injectors and, and all sorts of stuff. Um, then uh, the the injection pump went out in it and took it up to Northeast Diesel in uh, Shelbina, Missouri, which is very well known for pulling trucks and like really high horsepower stuff. So um, I sent the pump and injectors to them and uh, they turned it around and, and uh, made, gave me a pump and injectors uh, good for a thousand horsepower. Um, and that's where it sits. And, uh, and that's, that's as far as I got with that because the, in the time that I had the injectors and, and all that sent off, um, 
tore the motor down and, and found some some hillbilly stuff had been done inside of it and it needed a full rebuild. It ran, but it always had a vibration and uh, there's just a bunch of things. Um, so life got busy. It kind of got put to the side. Um, then I got cancer. So uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer. Obviously it was curable because I'm still here three, four years later. Um, but that definitely definitely changed a lot of things. Um, it That project got put to the side. Um, life kind of stopped for a while. Um, picked it back up and decided that I was going to build a, you know, a SEMA truck. Not, not that SEMA trucks typically have a good reputation anymore these days, but uh, just a super kind of over the top uh, build because I've, I've been in hot rods and, and mini trucks and street trucks and all that my whole life. So, you know, the building full chassis and stuff like that. Um, and, and I started that, uh, me and a same buddy that helped me w go and get the thing. Um, he came from Indiana to Missouri and, uh, just like every other weekend. And, uh, we tore that whole truck apart in two days, had, had it stripped down to a bare frame and started on the new frame that next weekend. Uh, got a, the full frame um, stitched together. It's it's not complete, but uh, the whole whole thing was was structurally sound, and and uh, all my mount points are ready to go. Um, and life threw another curveball, and I decided to come down here to Texas and work for these guys. Um, we had been friends for a while. Uh, I had come down to Texas in between the first time coming down to buy the truck and now there was a uh, there was a truck meet uh, OBS Addicts truck meet that uh, I just came down to to kind of meet all these people that I had been friends with on the internet for forever you know they talk about you know imaginary internet friends uh, so got to meet some uh, so that actually reminds me uh, that that 93 that IDI truck I had um, it introduced me to a whole bunch of friends on uh, old and website's still around, but I don't know how active it is. Uh, Oilburners.net. Um, that's where I met some of my best friends: Ron, Darren, Travis, Jason, um, Jared, all, Andrew, all sorts of guys uh, that are like I don't get to see them much anymore, especially moving down here to Texas. But uh, we went to a couple rallies, IDI rallies, um, camping for a week long with with a bunch of buddies and. Um, just having fun, causing a ruckus, whatever. Um, anyways, so didn't want to forget those guys because that, that was the cool thing about that 93. It was a hunk of crap, but yet I met some of my best friends because of that truck. Um, and the same was with the, the 95, you know, it kind of just opened the door to, to all these people and it actually opened the door to me coming down here and, and working. Um, so getting back on track. Came down, uh, met Chris and Paul, and uh, a bunch of other people that that also came down. Uh, Garrett, Brent, um, several other guys that were from the north, like further north than I was, um, also came down, and we we all converged um, and just just hung out, had a good. Uh, it was uh, I think a long weekend, um, and that's what uh, and that's how me and and Paul and Chris really became better friends. We we had been internet friends for several years at that point. Um but that kind of you know makes it more real. So so you know that that um that friendship grew and uh ended up a strange strange world um talking on the phone one day and and a uh, conversation came up about they were wanting to um they, they had started their, their online business. They had like an actual website and wanted to really take that to the next level. I jokingly said, well, I wish I was there. I could help you with that stuff. And that turned into a few months later, we moved here. So, um, so now we're in Texas and, um, you know, I brought the dually in pieces. It's, uh, it's sitting in my, uh, my extra garage right now. You know, we bought a house, got got the family moved down here. Um, so we were, you know, I was daily driving a 
Trailblazer SS. My wife had to be an older BMW. We're, we're not rich or anything. It was, it was, um, it was a cheap BMW. Um, so, you know, we're, I'm working on, on the website where I'm dealing with, uh, with OBS truck parts every day. Um, wishing I could get mine back up and going, but it's just, it's not, uh, it, it's unfortunately still in the back burner. It's just not something I have the space and time to work on right now. So, um, definitely wanted to get another one. Um, and I've always wanted a crew cab short bed truck, uh, OBS and really wanted a, a you know, four wheel drive one just because I, I've owned a few four wheel drives, but basically everything I've ever owned has gotten lowered, including four wheel drives. So, um, I'm just different that way. So the basically worked here for quite a while and the opportunity came up that, uh, uh, Paul had snagged this truck, um, for a, you know, good price. Uh, I think he was, he just wanted a few pieces off of it. He wasn't trying to, you know, do anything with it. So, uh, me and him bartered some, uh, you know, some stuff around and, uh, I ended up with the truck. So, uh, it was rough. It, uh, it had been previously owned by, uh, roofers. Um, probably took 15 pounds of roofing nails out of the back of it. There was trees growing in the bed, uh, when I got it. Um, it, the, the reason it, apparently it was parked because reverse went out. Um, so we dropped it off at a, a local, um, shop here with another transmission that he just happened to have it was supposed to be good put it in it also did not work properly in reverse uh finally so the truck sat for quite a while finally got a hold of a, another transmission that we know just came out of a truck that had just been running he did a five speed swap um got that put in works great um so at that point I start driving it and it's, you know, still, it was basically still as rough as the day I had gotten it at that point and have been working on it. Um, you know, every, every panel's got a dent on it somewhere, you know, it, it's a typical like 300,000 mile, you know, 97 Texas truck, um, two wheel drive obviously. So it didn't have a huge value on it. Um, and so I just kind of started tinkering with it and, uh, getting stuff fixed up, getting stuff working, getting, uh, you know, the odd and end things done to it. Um, ended up doing a, uh, DJM, uh, three, four kit on it and, uh, removed leaves out of the rear to make it a three, five. Um, cause they don't technically make a three, five for the, the two fifties and three fifties of this year. So I, uh, a buddy, a buddy of mine, Aaron, um, at standout specialties, he hooked me up on, on the wheels. I actually put the wheels on it before I lowered it. Um, 20 by 12s. And I like the, the wider stance. Um, you know, I, I like the big wheels, you know, say what you want. I like them. Um, and a lot of people, four wheel drives, jack them up, big wheels, you know, mud tires, I like big wheels and I like low and, you know, a lot, all my other trucks, the wheels tucked in the fender so I could go as low as I wanted. And, uh, this was a little different so that it obviously sticks out a little bit. And, um, I got a set of, uh, Bushwhacker cutout flares and was hesitant to do it because it's kind of no turning back when you cut the sides of your fenders and your bed out. Um, fender's no big deal. I was putting another set of fenders on it, but find another short bed. That was not really something I wanted to do. Um, so kind of, kind of took the, took the cues from like Ken Block. He's got a truck or had a truck, um, a newer F-150 that was kind of styled like this, low, wide fender flares, had a, uh, air spoiler on the front, a little spoiler on the back, kind of a, like a race E truck. Um, I, I don't plan to race this thing ever. It's just for looks really. Um, but, but that's what we did. So lowered it 
and it was really, really close on the fenders. I, I was trying to lower it and not actually do these flares because, again, it's kind of no turning back. But uh, once I got it lowered, it was just, it was like an inch and a half clearance. And I uh, couldn't turn, you know, looks cool, but if you can't drive it, that, that's the one thing. This is my daily driver, and every truck I've ever built, I've built to drive, not just have on a trailer or, or you know, parade around just on Sundays or whatever. We did the did the lowering kit, uh, did the flares, took it straight to Lone Star Throwdown uh, car show, uh, big car show here in Texas. And, um, you know, it's just been been uh, been fun. Uh, put some helper bags on the back so I could still tow with it, uh, tow camper around it here and there. And uh, my little trailer, uh, enclosed trailer I had at the time for LST Lone Star. Um, you know, towed that down there, uh, with our merch and stuff in it. Um, from there, I, uh, obviously, uh, went a little further, uh, got injectors from industrial injection. Um, my injectors actually were kick the can on the trip back from, from Lone Star, uh, started to, to get a sputter at, at high RPM and, um, basically had, had oil oil o-ring failure or something to that nature uh put a set of their stage twos in it uh and that's and uh, and tunes from uh from jelly built um and it, it runs great it uh it's not the fastest thing in the world it doesn't have tons of power but it's peppy it's nice to get out on the road it's got 355 gears so i can just get out and cruise and and just uh just enjoy it. So, um, it's got, it's got a few things on it. It's got our headlights. It's got our grill. Um, it's got some new taillights that we just came out with, um, that are our smoked taillights with uh, integrated LEDs in them, uh, instead of the, uh, the, the plug-in LEDs that we've had before. We still have those, but we're going to have these two. Um, I've got, uh, I've got a polished tailgate panel from OBS solutions. They, uh, they hooked me up there. Devin uh, really helped out with that. Um, I've got a few other pieces that are coming for it. I've got uh, one of our recovered steering wheels that's going to be a little bit different than what you guys have seen. It's coming. Um, I've got the I've got the tow uh, GM towing mirror kit from OBS Solutions to put on still, and. Uh, you know, it might, it, uh, it's probably going to get painted at some point cause I don't really like white, but, uh, you get what you get, I guess sometimes. Um, so obviously it, it's got a, a hood stack. So, um, growing up on the farm and around pulling trucks and stuff, I always wanted a hood stack. I thought it was so cool. And it's, uh, not, it's not really, it's kind of frowned upon, um, by most police, but, it's it's fun um it, it's loud it gets smoke on stuff but it's just cool like there's there's nobody else driving around my town with it there are a few guys i know with them whatever it's just having a good time it's a it's a seven inch um from uh grand rock it's you know made the made the pipe myself for it um, and it'll probably get a turbo cause, uh, towing, it gets hot, um, with the bigger injectors and stock turbo and everything. Um, it's got a, a bumper on it that it, it's not done yet because I've, uh, because of the flares, I've got to make a, a flare piece for the bumper to match it. Um, but it's a, a bumper that is no longer made. I don't even technically know who made this exact one. Um, there's a few different companies back in the 90s that made these. It has the Frenched in uh, fog lights. I've actually got another bumper with Frenched in fog lights and um, the billet cutout insert. Thought about swapping them out. We'll see. Um, and it's probably going to get lowered a little more. So like interior wise, I've, I've just kind of fixed uh, the stuff. They're, the seats were in horrible shape. Um, swapped them out for a little bit better seats. I'm uh, working on getting some lightning seats for the front. Um, I 
put a new dash bezel in. We sell that. I put uh, put LEDs. Every every bulb in the truck is LED. Um, it's got our prototype third brake light in there, which we're working on. It needs some revisions. Um, the the carpets are still dirty. The the door panels are rough. You know it. it again, three hundred thousand mile truck. So um, I'm gonna paint it at some point. I am kind of not sure on the color. Probably something um, loud and obnoxious, just because that's how I am. Um, Yellow. I've th been thinking about green, like bright lime green, or just way like way out there I've been um the thing about some carbon fiber stuff for it you know uh and it'll probably get some more power just because that's how things go but it it's not a race truck it's just a fun truck um uh, I I have a bad tendency of 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 um Tinkering with things to the point that they uh, become no longer daily drivable. So we'll see on this one. But uh, yeah, so that that's what it is. It's um, it's decent. It's not a show truck. It's daily driver, but uh, um, it's nice enough that uh, that I, I like driving it around. Um, people, a lot of people, a lot of people hate it because they don't like the style and a lot of people love it so it's it's it seems like everything i build no matter chevys fords whatever uh people either love them or they hate them there seems to be no in between so uh not exactly sure what that says about me as a person but that's what you get i guess and, and that you know a little bit of the drive to to get this truck and and turn it into something is uh, you know Chris and Paul, they're they're known, and the company itself is is known for really nice trucks. Um, and that's not to say that they haven't taken trucks that were rough turds and turned them into something nice. It's just typically you saw from them was just super nice and top of top of top of the market stuff. Uh, you know, selling selling trucks for 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 good money because they were like, you weren't going to find nicer ones. So a little bit of the draw to, for me was one, I didn't really want to put a bunch of money into a truck right away. And, you know, so we, we finagled around and, and did some bartering and horse trading and, and made this happen. So, you know, being able to have something that was, I won't say realistic because you can still find these trucks super nice, but having a truck truck that was like a bottom of the barrel and being able to kind of like show you guys, uh, our, our customers, our viewers, whatever along the way, like, like I have always rather have something stock basic run down. Like I don't particularly want run down, but that's where I usually ended up like getting something that was like rough and, fixing it up because I like to do, I like to put my own twist on things. So, um, being able to put like a ton of our parts on this truck, like, yeah, I work here, so I get a discount, but like being able to show people that like, Hey, the, like the door panel fixes, like this truck needs that. Like my driver's door panel just shakes in the wind. So we'll, we're going to do a video on like actually installing that. Um, the door lenses, the, the dome lights, the, just, just everything, mostly interior wise, everything that, uh, that we sell this truck needed and some, um, so that was kind of like the, kind of the fun thing was like, like there is definitely something about handing over a bunch of money and having a super nice truck and being able to just go look what I've got. It's nice. You get in it, you drive it. Um, and there's also something for saying, hey, hopefully it makes it to work today. We'll find out, though, <laughs> you know, um, and, and, and building something from nothing. So it, it's been fun. Like I said, I like tinkering on stuff. Sometimes it annoys you. Like I spent all Saturday fixing the stupid AC in this thing, which you'd need in Texas. Found that out the hard way. But 
you know, we we always talk here at work and like our our advertising and our and our posts and stuff like that. Always talk about like enthusiast owned. It's true. Like you can look around in here. Like there's what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There, there's eight OBS trucks in here right now in our warehouse. And that's just the ones in here. There's outside, other properties, all over. And it's not just like a like a you know get rich scheme. It's we actually like enjoy working on these things and and showing people what you can do with them. Like yeah, there, there's definitely pride. You take pride in, in building something, but um, we like these things. And I know what it's done. Like all the friends that I've met and just all the different like experiences. You get that with like if you're into cars, like you get that, you know the the culture and and stuff. Um, but you also like to share that with other people. So like getting more people to either fix these trucks up and keep them, or to just go out and get them in the first place. That that's what we're after. Like money's great and everything, but uh, but letting people see like the the fun you can have with these and the passion and and you can still go out and work them like it's not just a uh it's not just a uh, uh, uh something you you have for sundays drives and keep in the garage the rest of the week like you can still work these things they they make power they still tow there's people towing stuff all over your all over the world with these things still so so this has been uh, been my story and the story about the uh, the crew cab short bed. So I um, hope you enjoyed a little little story time. Um, again, like and subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions, if you if you've got a project you're working on yourself, heck, if you just want to like show off a little bit, send us an email, tag us on Facebook, tag us on Instagram, whatever. Um, links in the description, how to get a hold of us. So, uh, again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, and subscribe. We're gonna try to get some more stuff out to you guys for content. So there you go.